Exclusive footage of the Great Barrier Reef shows what could be the most severe and extensive coral bleaching on record. A leading coral researcher has just returned from a four-day aerial survey of reefs off Australia's far north coast and of the 520 reefs his team flew over, all but four were damaged. The extreme bleaching event is likely to kill some of the world's most pristine coral, as Peter McCutcheon reports. This will change the Great Barrier Reef forever. We're seeing huge levels of bleaching in the northern thousand kilometre stretch of the Great Barrier Reef. The sheer scale of coral bleaching is revealed in footage shot for a scientific survey last week. For over a thousand kilometres from Cairns to the Torres Strait, the once colourful ribbons of reef are a ghostly white. Leading this expedition is one of Australia's most eminent coral scientists, Professor Terry Hughes. For me personally, it was devastating to look out of the chopper window and see reef after reef destroyed by bleaching. Um, but really my emotion is not so much sadness as anger. I'm really angry that the government isn't listening to the evidence that we're providing them since 1998. Terry Hughes and his team rated a staggering 95% of the reefs they flew over in the most severely bleached categories. That's considerably more severe than past bleaching events, where the figure was under 20%. It's too early yet to tell precisely how many of the bleached corals will die, but judging from the extreme level of bleaching, even the most robust corals are snow white, I'd expect to see about half of those corals die in the coming month or so. We're already seeing mortality beginning in our underwater surveys near Cairns and Port Douglas. Coral bleaching is caused by abnormally high sea temperatures that kill the tiny marine algae essential to coral health. When Environment Minister Greg Hunt flew over the reef eight days ago, he was witnessing the third mass bleaching event since 1998. His overall message was one of cautious optimism. There's good and bad news. The reef, of course, is uh, 2,300 kilometres long. Um, the bottom three quarters of the reef is in uh, strong condition. Uh, as we head north of Lizard Island, it becomes increasingly prone to bleaching. Greg Hunt wasn't available today for an on-camera interview, but he told 7.30 he remains confident in the advice from the Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority that 75% of the reef has escaped the worst of coral bleaching. Reef scientist Professor Justin Marshall, who witnessed firsthand the bleaching event in the north, is not so sanguine. I was prepared to be a bit disappointed and shocked, but to see 100% of the corals. I did not see a single healthy coral on that reef. So for the, you know, one of the jewels in the crown of Australian research, the Australian Museum Research Station, to have 100% of its corals bleached was, uh, it was devastating. Justin Marshall was on Lizard Island, northeast of Cairns, when the bleaching started just over two weeks ago. What do you reckon? Well, it's fantastic. His trip to the reef wasn't to research bleaching. It was partly to talk to David Attenborough for an ABC documentary about his field of expertise how fish view colour. The residents of this marine paradise. But shortly after filming the documentary, an unfolding disaster forced a change of focus. He found even coral with some colour left are in danger. Many of these corals are brilliant, uh, purples and, and yellows and, and pinks, but that's the actual polyp. What these corals have lost is the symbiotic algae that makes them a nice healthy brown or green. Um, so they're dying? They're dying, yes. This northern part of the Great Barrier Reef is the most pristine part of the marine park. In fact, it's probably the healthiest coral in the world. And that is one possible glimmer of hope. On the bright side, it's uh, more likely that these pristine reefs in the northern section will be better able to bounce back afterwards. Nonetheless, we're looking at a 10-year recovery period. So this is a very severe blow to the most pristine part of the Great Barrier Reef. It's hardly good news. This is part of a global coral bleaching event. Scientists at the Australian Institute of Marine Science near Townsville 
have been studying coral history and find no evidence of these type of disasters before the late 20th century. We have coral cores that provide 400 years worth of annual growth and we don't see the signatures of bleaching and reduced growth following a bleaching event until the recent 1998-2002 events over a 400 year period. What we're seeing now is, is unequivocally to do with climate change. You know, Paris, the Paris climate change meeting, uh, essentially the whole world has agreed this is climate change and we're seeing climate change play out across our reefs. <laughs> And it's this direct link between climate change and the deterioration of the reef that scientists like Terry Hughes and Justin Marshall feel hasn't been clearly acknowledged by governments of all persuasions. It's quite frustrating to me and to the science community that the government has not listened to us for the past 20 years. It has been inevitable that this bleaching event would happen eventually, and now it has. We've been saying to the government that for the sake of the Great Barrier Reef, Australia needs to join the global community in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The prognosis just gets worse and worse as more of these global events occur. I guess what upsets me the most is that we are literally stealing the future from our children. I'm going to be dead within 30 years. I probably won't see the possible end of the Great Barrier Reef. But it's possible that my grandchildren will, and that really upsets me. Peter McCutcheon with that report.